how's it going so today I'm going to do a tutorial slash guide on how to start off on the new tech it as when I first started to play tech it there was nothing on how to start off nothing on the tech it wiki no YouTube videos on how to start off so firstly you should go and make sure you have enough resources to make the things that I'm going to show you and this will also be a two part video which the first part I'll be showing you certain items and useful tips and the second um, video will be on power and how to get it so here's a list of things that I'll be showing you how to make and the pro and cons of them so it will be I'll be showing you the backpack, the workbench backpack, the minion stone, axes and trees, sterling engine, pulverizer and a powered furnace. The first two items I'll be showing you are the backpack and the workbench backpack. I'll talk about the backpack which is the one on the left by the way then the workbench backpack. So as you can see the backpack is similar to make all you need is 8 leather which is shown in the diagram. The pros of the backpack are as I said it's simple to make. You will have 27 more space for items. But the only con I can see is if you die you'll lose everything in your inventory. And everything in your backpack which if you went out and got a lot of stuff it can be very very annoying. I will keep the diagram in the top left corner while I'm talking about the backpack. As you can see my backpack is purple and you can get a lot more colours but I thought that ain't very important for this video so I won't be showing you that. The backpack is very simple to use as all you do is right click to get it up while holding the backpack and as you can see if you put stuff in there and go back off and go back on it will still be in there. And to get off you'll just press your inventory button as you normally would do if you're in your inventory which is mine default is by E so I press E to go off it right click to go on E to go back off you can also make a big backpack but that involves a lot of leather and as you are just starting off I thought I wouldn't um, show you that as I don't think it's very important for this video now for the workbench backpack which is the one on the right guys Okay, so the pros of the workbench backpack are that it's simple to make, all you need is 8 leather and a crafting table as you can see in the diagram. Unlike the workbench, you don't have to place the bag, you don't have to place it down, all you need for it to work is to be in your inventory, which is a big plus I think. It can also be used as extra storage which I'll show you later on in the video and I can't really see any cons for the workbench backpack so I didn't write any okay here is the workbench backpack it only comes in one colour so you can't have a red one, orange, purple, whatever it just comes by this colour in by default while holding the workbench backpack right click to open as you look here, right click it and you open it and you know you put your stuff in there to make it and click there and you'll press your inventory button to get off as I said earlier you can also use this as extra storage just open the backpack and leave items in the crafting area as I'm doing here and I'll click off it you know do what you're doing and go back on and as you'll see the items are still there so you can, in theory you can use this as extra storage which that is it for this for both the workbench the workbench and backpack guys 
nouns in a minion stone. I chose a minion stone because you can make obsidian, which normally you would get a diamond pickaxe, you know, go in a cave and mine at it. But the way I'm showing you, you will not have to waste any of your diamonds, so you don't need to waste your diamonds to make a pickaxe. Okay, now how to make it. On the left is a minion stone. The rest, the rest, the recipe, which all you need is an insert stone in the middle and shard of minions around it. To make the insert stone, you need a gold ignit in the middle, four iron ignits in the left, right, bottom, and top boxes, and a smooth stone in the corners. As you can, as you can see, the little diagram on the right. Okay, the shard of minion and how to get. The only way you can get a shard of minion is to kill a mob. And maybe it might drop a shard of minion, but it's not 100% that every time you kill one, it'll drop one. And I'm just going to show a quick clip of me killing a mob, and it will drop a shard of minion, and then I will show you what a shard of minion looks like. So, I don't know how long that clip will be, but hopefully it will be in that allocated little time. The pros and cons of the minion stone. So the prize of the minion stones, I think it's not diff that difficult to make, apart from you're, you're, you're using four iron. That's the only, oh, that's the only downside. But I only really see it as a, as a giant downside. And an another pro is that there are some good re recipes to use. There are quite a lot out there as well. It's hard to find a con for the minion stone, which the only. Con I found was there's a maximum usage, and I think that is around 500. So after that 500, you have to make a new minion stone. Okay, this is what the minion stone looks like when you're holding it. It looks like a red ball. If you go over a block, it will tell you what the minion stone will turn it into. For example, that that's a better one. It'll turn this orange wall into purple wall. I'll turn that into purple. Stones are not stone. Yeah, look, cobblestone, it'll turn it into grass. And dirt will be turned into cobblestone. Some of the other things you can do with the minion stone is is you can get iron from using obsidian. And another useful one is you can get melon from a pumpkin which you know melon seeds are quite difficult to get but there are a lot more recipes out there to look at but I'm going to show you an example so we're going to go over to a workbench and all I'm going to do is put it in the top left and get some normal wood, it doesn't have to be jungle wood and just put it next to it in an obsidian without using a diamond pickaxe Okay, now I'll be showing you two tips. The first tip is about axes. When playing normal Minecraft, I never used axes as I thought they were pointless as you waste materials when you can just use your hand instead. It might take a little bit longer, but it still gets the job done. But, on Turkey, axes have a new ability. When you hit a block, everything above will come down in an instant. This comes very handy when you come against big jungle trees like this and everything will come down in seconds as you can see I hit it from this block wait when it does this, I don't know why it's taking forever but it's nearly done Boom. See, you know, when everything's come down, now how much wood do you get? You might have to find where the thing um, uh, wood and that drops. The only disadvantage is not sometimes not everything comes down. Some of the branches will stay there because they're not 100% connected. But other than that, yeah. But you do have to be aware, if your pickaxe is nearly broke, 
don't use it as it won't bring the whole tree down it will just bring a little bit as it it does use the um, pick at, uh, the axe's health and of course the better the pickaxe the longer it will last so if you had a diamond one it will last forever ok now for the second tip and most of you probably already know this but I just thought I would bring it up as it's kind of important and that is charcoal now coal is annoying to get if you're low uh, as you don't want to go mining all the time just for coal and so if you got wood put it in the furnace put let's say you've got a stack of 64 you put half in the top half in the bottom and you just wait until it brings out until it burns charcoal which wait until it falls up there that one charcoal this might be annoying that you have to keep on going outside for wood but if you have a big jungle tree like I showed you in the previous tip then you can get quite a bit of wood from just one tree so just think about if you had a couple of big jungle trees outside you'd get easy one tree I think can give you over 64 which I think I got 70 odd which is quite a lot so if you had two it's like 150 I think in near one so that's it for these two tips now on to the sterling engine which will give you basic power to machines for the time being sterling engines do need a source to power it so anything like coal or wood can power it but things like coal will power it better than wood the engine will turn different colours for the stages it reaches so when it's blue it means the engine is off or working at the lowest it can work at green means it's at low power yellow means it's working at its peak red means that it's in danger of blowing up so how to make the stone engine you'll need three cobblestone in the top three slots in the middle three slots one glass in the center slots Now the bottom three slots you'll need two stone gears in the bottom two corners and a piston in the middle of the gears. For pros and cons to stone engine, I think the pro the pros are it's quite easy to make for what it does, you know, it powers your your machines for the time being and that. And as it'll go lead on to this, is the best I think it's the best earliest source of energy you can get. For cons that I can see, the engine can blow up and if there's anything next to the engine there's a chance that that could also get destroyed so you'd have to make that again and that is really annoying. It uses up coal which can get very annoying as you have to keep on going and get some more coal, you know, keep on going out which you don't really want to keep on doing that. And the last con is the engine does need to be watched over as it can blow up and it can also the engine can also stop so you'll need a wrench to start it again and you don't want to be standing over it watching it 24-7 as you could be doing other important things. So here's what the stone engine looks like when you're holding it. When you're holding it and you're you know basing a block, you just right click it to place it down. But if you place it down next to a machine, it'll automatically face that machine. But I'll go over you know how to power a machine later on when I do like the pulverizer or something. But I won't do that now. Okay. You will right click it when you place it. Right click it to go into it. And this is what it looks like in this slot is where you have to put like coal or charcoal in it to power the machine so it starts going. But you will need to put a lever like next to it so you can go. I'll show you that more when I did a pulverizer. The blue bit in the middle though, you have to be careful as if that bit goes red, then turn it off as you don't want it to blow up. 
Okay, now onto the pulverizer, which is an important machine as it will turn any ores into dusts, which I'll sh expand on that later on when I show you the some examples. Okay, how to make the pulverizer? You'll need one piston slot in the top middle slot. For the middle row, you'll need in the middle slot a machine frame, which to make a machine frame, you'll need a golden gold ignit in the middle slot, four iron ignits in each corner, and glass in the other slots. Either side of the machine frame, you'll need a flint. The bottom row. You'll need a redstone reception coal in the middle slot. To make one of these, you'll need a gold ignit in the middle slot and redstone in the top right and bottom left corners. Either side of the core, you'll need a copper ignit. So, now for the pros and cons of the pulverizer. I think the cons are... The cons, the pros, doubles your input. But only for ores, so you can't put a diamond in it and expect to get like two like two diamond dusts. So it doesn't work like that. And for what the pulverizer does, I think it's not exactly hard to make. As you don't need any rare items in a pulverizer. So uh I think it's quite a good machine early on. And to be honest, I was trying to think of any cons and I couldn't think of any. So, that's it for this. So this is what the pulverizer looks like when you're holding it. If you right click on a block, it will place the block and you can use a pickaxe to pick it back up. When placed down, you're probably wondering what the coloured circles are and that. Well, for the time being, I'm just going to focus on the blue one, which is the input. Which you, that's how you use to like power the machines and put stuff in the machine. Which to power it, all you need to do is put a sterling engine next to the blue, one of the blue dots. Of course, put a lever down and put coal in the sterling engine and turn it on. And to go to go inside the pulverizer, you just look at it and right click. As you can see, it is slowly putting power into the machine. Uh, I'll show you an example. Why? I need to quickly go and get an ore. At least it's there, um, uh, I've got one copper ore. Which I'll put in this machine. See one copper ore into the blue slot. As you can see it's took it and it's pulverizing it. It does take a little little time to um, pul um, pulverize as you see on this arrow. It's the full up. And when it's done See from one copper ore you get two pulverized copper dusts and if you put them in a furnace you'll get two copper ignits.